HRC, 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 Hebrew readers, Hebrew readers, Hebrew readers, church. Shout out to the Talon family. We hope everybody's having a wonderful Sabbath day. Uh, I'm your brother, Zach Law, and this is your brother, Kasafo. We are Hebrew Readers Church. Um, for anyone that is new, please uh, feel free to write a comment in the chat below to introduce yourself. Uh, we love meeting new people. Uh, we definitely thank everyone that's members and, and part of the family of Hebrew Readers for all their support and everything else that you guys bring to the table, all the special people that we have, we glorify Allah for you. Uh, we hope that everything has been well for you this past week, and even today, that you're at peace. Uh, with none further ado, uh, we do have our lesson today, the uh, daily sacrifice. Uh, Kasifo, do you have anything before we got going? There's updates on the website. The website tabs are being updated working through that and other than that thank you all for your support and everything zach Ball said amen <laughs> praise the higher all right the daily sacrifice dun, dun, dun. <laughs> drum roll <laughs> uh, <laughs> the little horn in daniel chapter eight and daniel chapter seven actually was shown to daniel in his visions to be the one to take away the daily sacrifice in these end times please visit that lesson who is the little horn for understanding the devil is the little horn that shall arise in the form of the false prophet now today let's look at the prophecy and history to see what the daily sacrifice being taken away entails by first looking at what transpired with antiochus epiphanes who did take away the daily sacrifice in the days of the Greek Empire. Can you start at Daniel chapter 11, verse 21, please? Sure. And in his estate shall stand up a vile person, to whom they shall not give the honor of the kingdom, but he shall come in peaceably and obtain the kingdom by flatteries. This came to pass during the Greek Empire. Can you read First Maccabees chapter 1, verse 10, please? Sure. And there came out of them a wicked root, Antiochus surnamed Epiphanes, son of Antiochus the king, who had been a hostage at Rome. And he reigned in the hundred and thirty and seventh year of the kingdom of the Greeks. He was prophesied to come and massacre Israel by exploits. Can you read Daniel chapter 11 verse 28 please? Then shall he return into his land with great riches. And his heart shall be against the holy covenant, and he shall do exploits and return to his own land. Let's look at his exploits as the prophecy said. Mind you, this is before the daily sacrifice was ever taken away. Can you read first Maccabees chapter one, verse twenty, please? Sure. And after that Antioch had smitten Egypt, he returned again in the hundred forty and third year and went up against Israel and Jerusalem with a great multitude. Let's get some more details in 2 Maccabees chapter 5, verse 11 to 14, please. All right, 2 Maccabees chapter 5, verse 11. Now when this that was done came to the king's car, he thought that Judea had revolted, whereupon removing out of Egypt in a furious mind, he took the city by force of arms and commanded his men of war not to spare such as they met, and to slay such as went up upon the houses. Thus there was killing of young and old, making away of men, women, and children, slaying of virgins and infants. And there were destroyed within the space of three whole days fourscore thousand, wherefore forty thousand were slain in the conflict, and no fewer sold than slain. So in his exploits at that time, his first exploit, there was 
four score thousand, that's 80,000 were killed in the conflict and no fewer than 80,000 were sold into slavery. Can you read first Maccabees chapter one, verse 24, please? And when he had taken all away, he went into his own land, having made a great massacre and spoken very proudly. We see the massacre of the Israelites by military came before the daily sacrifice was taken away. He also left evil people to govern and to vex the nation. Both Jew and Gentile helped afflict the people. Can you read 2 Maccabees chapter 5, verse 22 and 23, please? 2 Maccabees chapter 5, verse 22. And he left governors to vex the nation. At Jerusalem, Philip, for his country of Phrygian, and for manners more barbarous than he that set them there. And at Gerizim, Andronicus, and beside Melanus, who worse than all the rest, bearing heavy hand over the citizens, having a malicious mind against its countrymen, the Jews. Let me see Menelaus. He was actually a Jew, and he was more cruel upon the people than the Gentiles. Interestingly, hopefully that helps understand how just because one may be of your nation doesn't mean that they're going to have your best interests at heart. Let's see what else transpired after that. Can you read Daniel chapter 11, verse 29 to 31, please? Sure. Daniel chapter 11, verse 29. At the time appointed, he shall return and come toward the south, but it shall not be as the former or as the latter. For the ships of Chittim shall come against him, wherefore he shall be grieved and return and have indignation against the Holy Covenant. So after Antiochus' second attempt at war with Egypt, Antiochus went back after the Holy Covenant to destroy the people again. Continue, please. So shall he do. He shall leave and return and have intelligence with them that forsake the Holy Covenant. He had the Israelites helping him destroy their own people. They still do that to this day. Can you read Daniel chapter 11, verse 31, please? An arm shall stand on his part. He'll have a military again. Continue, please. And they shall pollute the sanctuary of strength. And the military will pollute the sanctuary. Continue, please. And shall take away the daily sacrifice. And they shall place the abomination that maketh desolate. After all that, they'll finally take away the daily sacrifice and set up their abomination and desolation. Notice, he had to get his army together to do all these things. Let's see how these things came to pass. Can you read First Maccabees chapter 1, verse 29, please? Mm -hmm. And after two years fully expired, the king sent his chief collector of tribute unto the cities of Judah, who came unto Jerusalem with a great multitude. So he sent someone on his behalf with the military. Let's see what they were instructed to do. Second Maccabees chapter 5, verse 24 and 25, please. All right. He sent also that detestable ringleader Apollonus with an army of two and 20,000, commanding him to slay all those that were in their best age and to sell the women in the younger sort. So his secret order was to kill the men and enslave the women and young ones. But that's not what was being told to the people. Can you read the next verse, please? Who come into Jerusalem and pretending peace, dear forbear till the holy day of the Sabbath. When taking the Jews, keeping holy day, he commanded his men to arm themselves. They came in by guise of peace to carry out the plot to destroy Israel. Hopefully that helps understand when things look like they're well or going to be well, desolation is nigh. First Maccabees chapter 1, verse 30, please. And they spake peaceable words unto them, but all was deceit. And when they had given him credence, he fell suddenly upon the city, 
and smote a very sore and destroyed much people of Israel. All right, Second Maccabees chapter 5, verse 26. And so he slew all them that were going to the celebrating of the Sabbath, and running through the city with weapons slew great multitudes. First Maccabees chapter 1, verse 31. And when he had taken the spoils of the city, he set it on fire, and pulled down the houses and walls thereof on every side. So they massacred the people and destroyed their neighborhood. This is the second exploit being done on the people. First Maccabees chapter 1, verse 32. Please. But the women and children took their captive and possessed the cattle. You can see the attack was on the Hebrew men mainly to destroy the name of Israel out of the earth as a nation, just like the Egyptians tried to do, as we discussed in the Exodus story lesson. This is the world agenda here to come in the end times as well. Can you read Psalms 83 verse 3 to 5, please? All right, Psalms 83 verse 3. They have taken crafty counsel against thy people and consulted against thy hidden ones. They have said, Come, and let us cut them off from being a nation, that the name of Israel may be no more in remembrance. So we see what the agenda is. By cutting off the male seed, our name would be no more, as the nation is established through the sons. Psalm 33 and 5. For they are consulted together with one consent. They are confederate against thee. So the whole world is in one consent to destroy the name of Israel as is continuing present day. Let's see what else was done by Antiochus' military because they also must pollute sanctuary according to Daniel 11 and 31. If you can read First Maccabees chapter 1, verse 33 to 37, please. Sure. Then build a day the city of David with a great and strong wall and with mighty towers and made it a stronghold for them. And they put therein a sinful nation, wicked men, and fortified themselves therein. So they took their military and situated themselves in our cities to rob and to destroy. Continue, please. They stored it also with armor and victuals. And when they had gathered together the spoils of Jerusalem, they laid them up there. And so they became a sore snare, for it was a place to lie in wait against the sanctuary, and an evil adversary to Israel. Thus they shed innocent blood on every side of the sanctuary and defiled it. Remember the prophecy in Daniel eleven thirty one said, and they shall pollute the sanctuary of strength. Now we know that meant the shedding of the blood of the children of Israel to defile it, as you may already see. The indignation against the Holy Covenant was firstly on the people. That's the third instance wherein the Hebrews are being massacred before the daily sacrifice is ever taken away. Precepts help understand that the attack on the sanctuary in these prophecies is truly an attack on the men of Israel. Can you read Lamentations chapter 4, verse 1 and 2, please? How would the gold become dim? How is the most fine gold changed? The stones of the sanctuary are poured out in the top of every street. The precious sons of Zion, comparable to fine gold, how are they esteemed as earthen pitchers? The work of the hands of the potter. Through this precept, it helps you understand the stones of the sanctuary are referring to the precious sons of Zion that are being poured out in the street. After all this, going back to Antiochus, after all that he had done, Antiochus attacked the Holy Covenant by causing the people to transgress the laws and took away the daily sacrifices. Can you read 1 Maccabees chapter 1, verse 41 to 51, please? Uh, 1 Maccabees chapter 1, verse 41. Moreover, King Antiochus wrote to his whole kingdom, that all should be one people. And everyone should leave his laws, so all the heathen agreed according to the commandment of the king. 
Yea, many also of the Israelites consented to his religion and sacrificed unto idols and profaned the Sabbath. For the king had sent letters by messengers unto Jerusalem and to the cities of Judah that they should follow the strange laws of the land. That's interesting that just by following the laws of the land, they consented to his religion. Yes. Let's see. And forbid burnt offerings and sacrifices and drink offerings in the temple. There we see the daily sacrifice was taken away finally. After three exploits of massacring the children of Israel, um, turning them into an idolatrous nation by forcing them to consent unto mm -hmm. the customs of the nations and going by the laws of the land, then the daily sacrifice is taken away, literally. Continue, please. That they should profane the Sabbaths and festival days and pollute the sanctuary and the holy people. As you can see, they took away the Sabbath and festivals. This is where these things are said not to matter in these times. And then polluting the people and the sanctuary, you can, we get unclean. We have laws against uncleanness and things of that nature. And let's see how did they further pollute the sanctuary and holy people. Can you continue, please. Uh, first Maccabees chapter 1 verse 47. Set up altars and groves and chapels of idols and sacrifice swine's flesh and unclean beasts that they should also leave their children uncircumcised and make their souls abominable with all manner of uncleanness and profanation. To the end, they might forget the law and change all the ordinances. That's the goal of the indignation against the Holy Covenant and taking away of the daily sacrifice to cause us to forget the law and change all the ordinances. From what Antiochus established, they took away our eighth day circumcision. Now today they instruct us to circumcise our sons on the first day they are born instead of waiting until the appointed time according to the law. We have been led away from our proper diet by our dietary law to eat swine's flesh and unclean beasts and shrimp, lobster, duck, and the different things that are eaten in, from sushi like octopus and such. These are things that are common practices today. Yet, these are the things that are taking us away from the ordinances and causing us to forget the law, not knowing about the Sabbath day not knowing about the festival days, or if we know, not acknowledging them or giving heed to them. So we can see what the whole indignation against the Holy Covenant was to cause us to transgress. And Zach Ward mentioned in the, that lesson, understanding the attack to come on Israel and these end times, they're going to use violence against Jacob and transgression against Israel. So just causing us to sin is helping get us killed. In the times to come, even as it did in the past. So let's continue. Even first Maccabees chapter one, verse fifty to fifty-one. All right. And whosoever would not do according to the commandment of the king, he said he should die. In the self same manner wrote he to his whole kingdom, and appointed overseers over all the people, commanding the city to Judah to sacrifice city by city. There you see, in that time, if we did not give in to going against the Holy Covenant, we will lose our lives. Hopefully you can understand how our upbringing for those raised in Western culture or in the world here today, coming from the customs of the Greeks and the Romans, how the upbringing we've had has basically raised us up in this type of lifestyle, which was once something that People lost their life trying to stay away from. Let's continue to see what else happened in the indignation against the Holy Covenant. Second Maccabees chapter 6, verse 1 to 9, please. 
Not long after this, the king sent an old man of Athens to compel the Jews to depart from the laws of their fathers and not to live after the laws of Elohim. See, they'll send folks to teach the people to depart from the laws with other philosophies. All right, continue, please. Okay. Uh, Second Maccabees 6 and 2. And to pollute also the temple in Jerusalem, and to call it the temple of Jupiter, Olympus, and that in Gerizim of Jupiter, the defender of strangers, as they did desire that dwelt in the place. Notice, they did desire to change the names of the temples. This is where you see introducing the name of idols over the holy places was something that was brought in by the nations as well. Jupiter is the Roman name for the Greek Zeus. And you can keep going on back if you go search into it to see how the names of these idols in different nations and different tongues, they'll call the same idols by their respective names in their languages, right? And here today, if you haven't had the opportunity to watch the lesson, who is God? God is a Babylonian deity, according to Isaiah 65 and 11, to understand that here today, we have temples of idols all over. And you may see some place called like the Church of God, where this is actually the name of an idol that's being given praise by these names and such to understand that as was happening in the past, same things are happening today. It's just we perish for lack of knowledge. We don't know. And for us, some of us who do know, we don't think it's true for whatever reason. Yet the scriptures help us understand what's going on, thankfully, by the Lord's grace. Um, continue, please. Uh, Second Maccabees chapter 6, verse 3. The coming in of this mischief was sore and grievous to the people. For the temple was filled with riot and reveling by the Gentiles. These were noisy drinking parties. All right, continue, please. Who dallied with harlots and had to do with women within the circuit of the holy places. Fornication went along with this party. And continue, please. And besides that, brought in things that were not lawful. All right. Go ahead, please. The altar also was filled with profane things, which the law forbid. The food of the partying stuff were unlawful things, like swine. Sadly, this party doesn't sound far off from the common parties today. You have drinking, you have fornication, having to do with women, and unclean food. So hopefully this helps understand that the path the world is on is right along with what the devil had desired for the people to walk in from all time. Continue when you're ready, please. All right. Neither was it lawful for a man to keep Sabbath days or ancient feasts, or to profess himself at all to be a Jew. Notice our culture, customs, religion, and nationality was condemned. Okay. Continue, please. And in the day of the king's birth, every month, they were brought by bitter constraint to eat of the sacrifices. Forced into birthday celebrations, which is unlawful. Sadly, today, it's frowned upon not to celebrate your birthday. And hopefully this helps understand how far we are from Allah these days. Continue, please. And when the Feast of Bacchus was kept, the Jews were compelled to go in procession to Bacchus carrying ivy. Bacchus is a wine deity, also known as Bacchanalia. In Greco-Roman religion, it's a heavy drinking parties and orgies along with parades in procession to the idols. Today, it's commonly called Bacchanal or Carnival, and you can find folks still going in procession to music in the streets behaving indecently. These festivals are celebrated around the world and even encouraged. These things in the days of the Greeks were forced upon Israel by threats of death to participate, but now today, after having been raised up in this culture, 
we have been groomed to consider this unseemly custom to be our culture and is frowned upon if we don't partake. Continue, please. Well, Second Maccabees chapter six, verse eight. Moreover, there went out a decree to the neighbor cities of the heathen by the suggestion of Ptolemy against the Jews that they should observe the same fashions and be partakers of their sacrifices. It wasn't Antiochus alone, but rulers of other regions required us to forsake the law. We were forced to live according to the world customs and partake in their idolatry. You can read more about that in 3rd Maccabees, what happened over in Egypt with Ptolemy. But this is hopefully helps understand this indignation is the holy covenant is to send us onto lawlessness to transgress and give in to the manners of the nations. Second Maccabees chapter six, verse nine, please. And whoso will not conform themselves to the manner of the Gentiles should be put to death. Then might a man have seen the present misery. If we didn't give in, we would die for it. As opposed to today, we are so far from the faith that we partake in the manner of the Gentiles, either through ignorance of the past or present decadence. Or though we have knowledge, we just don't want to feel left out or offend anyone, so we partake. Antiochus also set up the abomination, as was prophesied he would do in Daniel chapter 11, verse 31. Continue First Maccabees chapter 54 to 58, please. Uh, first Maccabees chapter 1, verse 54. Now the 15th day of the month, Catholic, in the hundred forty and fifth year, they set up the abomination of desolation upon the altar and built idol altars throughout the cities of Judah on every side and burnt incense at the doors of their houses and in the streets. And when they had rent in pieces the books of the law which they found, they burnt them with fire. The scriptures were also destroyed in the effort to cause us to forsake the ordinances of the Lord. Go ahead, please. And whosoever was found with any book of the testament, or if any committed to the law, the king's commandment was that they should put him to death. Hopefully this helps understand what spirit is saying you shouldn't read or pay heed to the Old Testament or commit to keeping the laws. Continue, please. Thus did they, by their authority, unto the Israelites every month, to as many as were found in the cities. So we had the three exploits, and then they continued killing us just if we were found seeking to keep the law, and if we would not partake in the manners of the Gentiles. The focus was on Israel to keep them in transgression. His indignation against the Holy Covenant was real, and many Israelites died before the sacrifices were taken away and after the fact. We see history shows that the attack was on Israel first and continued to be on Israel as a daily sacrifice was taken away and abomination of desolation set up. Hopefully this helps understand what will come here in the end at the hands of the devil through the false prophet and the beast. Let's look at what the devil is prophesied to do now. Daniel chapter 7 verse 8 and verse 21 and verse 25, please. All right, uh, Daniel chapter 7, verse 8. I considered the horns, and behold, there came up among them another little horn, before whom there were three of the first horns plucked up by the roots. And behold, in this horn were eyes like the eyes of man, and a mouth speaking great things. We can understand he will speak great things, saying he is Lord and such from prior lessons. Continue, please. Daniel chapter 7 verse 21. I beheld, and the same horn made war with the saints and prevailed against them. The devil will war against the saints and prevail against them just like Antiochus did. Let's see what the interpretation says he will do. Daniel, Daniel 7 and 25. Mm -hmm. Nope, my bad. I'm sorry. And he shall speak great words against the Most High and shall wear out the saints of the Most High and think to change times and laws 
and they shall be given into his hand until the time and times and the dividing of time. So for three and a half years, the time, times, and dividing of time, he shall speak against the Most High and think to change the times and laws. And in this time also, he's going to wear out the saints of the Most High. Just like Antiochus, whose end goal was for us to forsake the commandments of the Most High and his ordinances. First Maccabees 1 and 49 showed that the goal of Antiochus was to cause it to forget the law and change the ordinances. And the devil is coming in like manner, but of course, on a greater scale. The devil's words will be according to unrighteousness for the sake of peace, just as like Antiochus's words were when he spoke of, let's all be one nation, let's all live after the one law, when it's making it seem as if that was for the betterment of everybody, when it was really for our demise. Can you read second? Thessalonians chapter 2 verse 10 to 12 so you can see the devil's speech would be according to unrighteousness uh, uh, 2nd Thessalonians chapter 2 verse 10 and with all deceivableness of unrighteousness in them that perish because they receive not the love of the truth that they might be saved and for this cause Allah shall send them strong delusion that they should believe a lie that they all might be damned who believe not the truth, but have pleasure in unrighteousness. So it's through deceivableness of unrighteousness and the pleasure in unrighteousness that the devil's deception and lies are going to cause us to fall. This should help understand how we will think to change times and laws by altering everything that Allah Hayyam ordained, as we read. He shall wear out the saints and he will take away the daily sacrifice in his effort to change the times and laws. Can you read Daniel chapter 8, verse 11 to 13, please? Daniel chapter 8, verse 11. Yea, he magnified himself even to the prince of the host. And by him, the daily sacrifice was taken away. And the place of his sanctuary was cast down. And an host was given him against the daily sacrifice by reason of transgression. And it cast down the truth to the ground, and it practiced and prospered. The truth will be cast down, just as Antiochus did cast down the truth through promotion of lawlessness. Verse 13, please. Then I heard one saint speaking, and another saint said unto that certain saint which spake, How long shall be the vision concerning the daily sacrifice and the transgression of desolation? to give both the sanctuary and the host to be trodden underfoot. Now let's see the interpretation of what these things mean. Daniel chapter 8, verse 19, and then verse 24 to 26. Daniel chapter 8, verse 19. And he said, Behold, I will make thee know what shall be in the last end of the indignation. At the time appointed, the end shall be. These are the things that must come here in the end of the indignation against us here in these end times. Verse 24. His power shall be mighty, but not by his own power. It's the devil empowering the false prophet. Continue, please. And he shall destroy wonderfully, and shall prosper in practice, and shall destroy the mighty and the holy people. The destruction of the Israelites to come will be a holocaust, truly. Verse 25, please. And through his policy also, he shall cause craft to prosper in his hand. And he shall magnify himself in his heart. And by peace shall destroy many. See, it's in the guise of peace many will be destroyed. So things are going to be said as if this is for the betterment of everybody. So we can all get along. This is going to get a lot of people killed. Continue, please. And he shall also stand up against the prince of princes, and he shall be broken without hand. He will try to fight Yache when he comes in the end, but he will be broken. Verse 26, please. And the vision of the evening and the morning, which was told, is true. Wherefore, shut up thou the vision, for it shall be. For many days. The interpretation of both the visions in Daniel chapter 7 and Daniel chapter 8 are 
true and they're speaking of the same things and these two visions show it's about him destroying israel during his time before christ comes and takes him down did you notice the interpretation didn't say anything about the actual daily sacrifice being taken away in these end times by the false prophet but only spake on how he would destroy israel and promote lawlessness we also saw antiochus destroyed israel on about three occasions before ever taking away the daily sacrifices i don't know how the false prophet will take away the daily sacrifice specifically nonetheless we see the devil will massacre the israelites by the interpretations wherein they're only talking about him destroying wonderfully in daniel 8 verse 23 and 24 and the acts committed by antiochus before the sacrifices were taken away the devil is going to prosper in destroying us until the indignation is accomplished can you read daniel chapter 11 verse 36 please and the king shall do according to his will and they shall exalt himself and magnify himself above every Elohim, and shall speak marvelous things against the Elohim of Elohims, and shall prosper till the indignation be accomplished, for that, that is determined shall be done. Daniel chapter 12, verse 6 through 9, please. And one said to the man clothed in linen, which was upon the waters of the river, how long shall it be to the end of those wonders? And I heard the man clothed in linen, which was upon the waters of the river, when he held up his right hand and his left hand unto heaven, and swear by him that liveth forever, that it shall be for a time, times and a half. And when he shall have accomplished to scatter the power of the holy people, all these things shall be finished. Our power will be scattered in those three and a half years of the beast destroying Israel on behalf of the dragon. Continue, please. Daniel chapter 12 and 8. And I heard, but I understood not. Then said I, O my Lord, what shall be the end of these things? And he said, Go thy way, Daniel, for the words are closed up and sealed to the time of the end. Lord willing. He will open the words when we get to the times of the end and the two prophets or the two witnesses prophesying will tell what these things mean. Daniel chapter 12 verse 10, please. Many shall be purified and made white and tried, but the wicked shall do wickedly and none of the wicked shall understand, but the wise shall understand. So hopefully we have understanding of what's to come. These times are going to be the trials of our lives, and Lord willing, we be delivered to stand before the Son of Man. That's all for now on that. Lord willing, it be some understanding, if the Lord will, at some point. You have anything else, Zachary? No, I don't. All right. Um. Please, we are updating the website as Brother Kasafo spoke before, um, prior. Um, we are trying to put a bunch more information on the website. So everybody just bear with us. Um, if there is any questions regarding the lesson or any other lesson, you can please write them in the chat below or send us an email at hebrewreaders at gmail.com. Um, the email address and the website address is in the link below the video. A Shabbat to Chalam, Brother Hanu. A Shabbat to Chalam, Brother Chinedu. A Shabbat to Chalam, uh, Sister Letta. A uh, Shabbat to Chalam, Zolisa. Right. It's a pleasure to have you. Shabbat to Chalam, Brother Babakuya. We hope everybody's doing well today. I keep you. Um, if anybody had any questions regarding anything, any topic, any words that we may use that you may not be familiar with, please just write us down in the chat so that we can explain it to you. Uh, we, we love everybody to be on one accord. I hope everybody enjoyed the lesson. Uh, make sure y'all tune in next Sabbath. We try to be punctual. 
but we'd be late. Sorry about that. Yeah. I am prosperous. All right. <laughs> we hope everybody have a great day. <laughs> y'all enjoy the rest of your Sabbath day. Uh, we love y'all, and may I keep you up. So. HRC, 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 HRC,